everybody! Welcome to the Jaded Stitches Show! Spring is on its way, and we wanted to celebrate by adding to our little Critter Drawstring Sack Collection by making this guy! Previously, we've made a little bunny and a teddy, and we'll put links to those tutorials in the description box down below. But today, we're going to add to the collection with this sweet and cheerful little chick. <laughs> It's a cute little place to stash some treats, or some small toys, or if you're a little sack collector like I am, just about anything that's smaller than him. Plus he looks cute sitting on the shelf. <laughs> so, let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, we'll flap our wings over to the craft table, and we will stitch up a little chick sack together. In order to make our little cheerful chick drawstring sacks, we're using 100% acrylic yarn, medium size four. You want approximately 200 grams of bright yellow and scrap amounts in orange and black. I have way more yarn here than I need for my project. You're going to want 60 centimeters or 24 inches of ribbon or cording or extra yarn for the drawstring. You're going to want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and we're using a four point five millimeter hook today. You can also use a 4.25 millimeter hook, also known as a G or a 6 in the US, a size 7 in the UK. And if you haven't already subscribed, take a moment to click that button and the bell so you never miss another episode. And once you've got all this together, we can get started. Visit our shop and purchase a pattern. You'll help support our show. And we'll put a link to our shop in the description box down below. We're going to begin with our yellow, and we're going to start with a cinch circle. Once you've chained one to secure your circle, we're going to work eight single crochet into that circle. Remember that you're working over top of your little short tail, because that's how we're going to cinch the circle shut when we're done. Once you have eight single crochet worked into your cinch circle, grab the short tail, cinch it shut nice and tight. We're going to work directly into the first stitch of row one to begin row two. So we're not joining our rows, we're just going to continue working in the round. So into that first stitch of row one, you're going to work the first two stitches of row two. So two single crochet into the first stitch. I'm going to work over top of my short tail as we go, but you can leave it out to the back and weave it in later if you find that easier. You're going to work two single crochet into each of those stitches all the way around, and at the end of row two, you'll have 16 stitches. At the end of row two, you'll have 16 stitches. Row three, we're continuing to work in the round, and this is the pattern we're going to work in row three two single crochet into the first stitch for row three, single crochet once into the stitch after that. You're going to repeat this eight times in total. So two single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet once into the stitch after that. We've done that twice, you're going to do it six more times, and you'll have 24 stitches at the end of row three. At the end of row three, you'll have 24 stitches. Row four, we're going to begin with two single crochet in the first stitch, and single crochet once into each of the next two stitches. So you're going to repeat that little pattern eight times in total, and at the end of row four, you'll have 32 stitches. So two single crochet into the first stitch of the set, single crochet once into each of the next two stitches. We've now done this twice, you want to do it six more times, and you'll have 32 stitches at the end of row four. At the end of row four, you'll have 32 stitches. We're continuing to increase in row five. We're going to begin with two single crochet worked into the first stitch. and a single crochet worked into each of the next three. So two single crochet into the first stitch of the set, single crochet into each of the next three stitches. Repeat that eight times in total. 
So we've just done one set, now you want to do that seven times more. And at the end of row five, you'll have 40 stitches. That's 40 stitches at the end of row five. We have one more row of increase to do. So for row six, we're going to begin with two single crochet worked into the first stitch. And single crochet into each of the next four stitches. You're going to repeat that little pattern eight times in total, all the way around. And at the end of row six, you'll have 48 stitches. At the end of row six, we have 48 stitches. That's it for the increasing. And we're also going to close off the end of row six by slip stitching into the very next stitch. So we're just gonna close everything off with a slip stitch. Now we're going to work a row of post stitches. So we're gonna chain one, and we're gonna be working around the outside of each post. So begin with a chain one, we're into row seven now. And in order to identify the post of a stitch, Instead of coming through, so you see where I've just joined, I'm going to start with this stitch right here, right where I've joined. I'm pulling up. I'm going to take my hook and go from the outside or the back to the inside or the front of my work and then back out through the stitch next to it. That pops the post of the stitch up on my hook and now I'm going to single crochet around it as I normally would. So this will take a little bit of getting used to. The first few post stitches in a row are often the most difficult, so take your time. Then you want to find the next one. So you come through from back to front, back out from front to back. There's your post. You're going to single crochet. Try not to work too tightly back to front, front to back, there's your post, single crochet, and what you're doing is you're creating a ridge, so you're working a single crochet around the post of the stitch, that takes the top of row six and forces it down so that we end up with this nice little flat bottom. So this is what you're going to have at the end of this row, this cute little ridge that runs all the way around the bottom of your sack and it allows it to have a flat bottom and to sit nice and flat on a surface. So you're going to work a single crochet around each post of each stitch. You'll have 48 stitches at the end of this row and then we'll move on from there. When you get to the end of row 7, your 48th stitch will be right here and we're, going, we're not joining this row with a slip stitch, we're just going to work directly into the next stitch, which was the first stitch of row seven. And we're gonna to continue to work a single crochet in the round for the next several rows. But I want you to make sure that you skip over top of the little chain one. So there's a bit of a transition from the flat bottom up to the ridged row, and that little chain one is the transition. So you're going to skip over that, and you're gonna make sure that you work into the actual single crochet. I'm just going to put a single crochet in there, and that's what it looks like. So your ridges end, you skip over that chain one, which is where we went from row six to row seven, because you don't want to use that. You still want to have 48 stitches in each row all the way around. Now having said that, it's no disaster if you end up with a stitch more or a stitch less, as long as you have a nice round little sack. So for rows eight to 21, all we're going to do is single crochet in each stitch, around and around and around and around. So just start single crocheting. You can kind of zen out from here. You don't really have to look at what you're doing or pay too much attention to it. I'll catch up with you at the end of row 21 and I'll show you how to count your rows and what it looks like. All right, here I am at the end of row 21 and this is sort of an easy way to count. So here's the little jog where row six turned into row seven. There's that little chain one that we're skipping. So you can count this post row, and the post row looks a little bit different. That was row number seven. And then you just count this, the rows as you go up. So there's eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. I finished my row directly above 
my little jog, so I know that's sort of the back of my little sack. And to finish off row 21, we're going to just slip stitch into the next stitch, sort of flatten off that row. I still have 48 stitches all the way around, but like I said, if you're up one, down one, it doesn't matter. You can cheat in what you need to. <laughs> we're going to create a little drawstring row now. So this is the little row of eyelets. We're going to chain one, and we're going to half double crochet in the same place that we chained one. So if you pull up on your hook, you can see that space. That's where you slip stitch to join. You're going to half double crochet right into that same place. Half double crochet into the next stitch. And now you're going to chain one, skip a stitch, and half double crochet into the next two stitches. And this is the little pattern you're going to repeat all the way around row 22. Chain one, skip one, half double crochet into each of the next two stitches. And that little chain one, skip one, is what's going to create the little eyelet so that we can run our ribbons through it. So go ahead, repeat that all the way around, and I'll catch up with you at the end. When you get around to the end, you're going to work your last two half double crochet, chain one, skip one, this right here is the false stitch. That's what our little chain came out of. So you're going to ignore that. That doesn't technically count. This is the stitch you're skipping. And you're just going to join with a slip stitch to the top of that first half double crochet. And there you go. That is your drawstring row all done. You can grab your scissors, snip your yarn, fasten off, and then grab your yarn needle and take a moment to weave your little tail in back and forth across some of the stitches in either the last row or the second last row. Back and forth. Make sure you weave it back in and on over top of itself a few times. That way your little tail isn't going to come undone. Once you've got your little tail woven in around the back, if you've got any left over after going back and forth a few times, you can trim any excess. And that is the bag part of our little drawstring sack all done. Now we're going to make his wings. So we're going to make two of these. We're still with our yellow yarn here. So you can grab your yellow yarn and your hook. We're going to begin with a cinch circle. And once you've chained one to secure your circle, you're going to work six single crochet into that circle. Same as before, make sure you're working over top of that little short tail. But this time, instead of eight, we want six. Six single crochet. Once you have six single crochet worked into that circle, grab your little short tail, cinch it up nice and tight. We are not joining our rows with a slip stitch. We are continuing to work in the round. So row two begins immediately in the first stitch of row one. We're going to go from a count of six to a count of nine. So here is the little pattern. We're going to work two single crochet into the first stitch. And that first one can always be a little on the stiff or the tight side. Again, I'm going to work over top of my short tail just to weave it in as I go, but you can just leave it out to the back if you want. So two single crochet into the first stitch, one single crochet into the next stitch, and you're going to repeat that twice more. Two single crochet into the next stitch, one single crochet into the next stitch. One more time and you'll be at nine stitches. Row two ends with nine stitches. We're going to go from nine to a count of 12. We're still working in this, the round here. So we're going to work the first stitches of row three into what was the first stitch of row two. We're going to begin with two single crochet worked into the first stitch of the set. And then a single crochet worked into each of the next two stitches. And that's your little pattern. You're going to repeat it three times in total. So that's one. Two single crochet into the next stitch single crochet into each of the next two. That'll be two sets, one more, and you're done row three. 
the end of row three and you should have 12 stitches. We're going to do one more row of increase now up to 15. We're going to do just like we did before. The first two stitches of row four are worked into the first stitch of what was row three. So two stitches to begin and then single crochet into each of the next three stitches. So two single crochet into the first stitch of the set, single crochet into each of the next three stitches, repeat that little repeater twice more, so for a total of three times all the way around, three times five is 15. At the end of row four, you should be up to 15 stitches and you should have a little, sort of like a little cone shape starting. For rows six, five, six, and seven, so we just finished row four, five, rows five, six, and seven, so three more rows, we're just going to single crochet in each stitch around. So each row will still have 15 stitches in it and there's no more increasing. You're just going to work a steady single crochet in every single stitch all the way around. Keep working in the round. We're not joining our rows and I'll see you at the end of row seven. At the end of row seven, you should still have 15 stitches and we're just going to even up the top of this row so that we're in alignment with that little bump there that changes row one into row two. So just single crochet once into each of the next four stitches and that should even up your last row and this just sort of makes everything lie nice and flat. And then the very last thing we're going to do is just slip stitch to finish off that row there's your little wing. Cut yourself a long tail for sewing, about 30 centimeters or 12 inches, somewhere in that ballpark. Fasten off and go ahead and make a second one so that you have two wings. We're going to make his beak now, so grab your orange yarn and your hook. We're going to begin with a slip knot. And we're going to chain five to begin. Once you have five chains, we're going to skip over the first chain from the hook and slip stitch into the second chain. Single crochet into the next chain. Half double crochet into the next chain and double crochet into the next chain. So you began with a chain five, you skipped over the first chain from the hook and you worked slip, single, half, double. We're going to chain five and repeat that all over again. So once you've chained five, skip the first stitch or the first chain from the hook, slip stitch into the second chain, then single, half, and double. And that brings you all the way back to the first triangle you made. You're going to see this little space underneath the first chain. That's right where your little beginner tail should be. You're just going to slip your hook right in there and you're going to slip stitch to join those two triangles together. Then you're going to snip your yarn eh, 12, 12 inches, 30 centimeters, maybe a little less just enough that you can sew with. And that is your little beak. <laughs> you can take a moment and with your yarn needle, weave your short tail in back and forth underneath some of the stitches in both of those triangles. We have one little set of things left to make and those are her little eyes. So you wanna make two of these. You can grab your black yarn and your hook and we're going to begin with a very small little cinch circle. Don't worry if you have trouble making them small and you end up with a long, quote, short tail because you can always trim it. You're just going to work four single crochet into your little cinch circle. Keep in mind you want to continue to work over top of that little short tail. Once you have four single crochet into your cinch circle, I know that's hard to see because it's black, Grab your short tail, cinch it up nice and tight. You're going to find that first single crochet, which is always a little tight. Slip your hook into it, and we're going to slip stitch to join the row. That is it. It is a tiny little circle that we're making. 
Grab your scissors, fasten off. That's going to be your sewing tail. And now if you flip it upside down and grab your yarn needle, you can weave your short tail in underneath a handful of those stitches three or four times. This isn't a big deal. You're not really getting it to, um, you're not really sort of worrying about it unraveling. You just want to weave it in a few times underneath some of those stitches and then you can trim any excess. And once this gets sewn down to our little chick, that little tail isn't going to go anywhere. All right, we've got all of our pieces. Now we want to put them together. So that's what he looks like finished. <laughs> and I'll take out his little bow here so that you can see what he looks like when he's all sort of straightened out. So we want to put his face on so that it's mostly in the middle of the sack. So we're going to start with the beak. So you can grab your little beak and your yarn needle. We're going to thread up that tail. And you're going to find the back of your sack. So the back of your sack is where that little jog happens. And you want the front, you can sort of flatten it out so that that little jog is in the middle back. Flatten it out and decide where you want the very middle of your face to be. I'm going to pick the middle. So the very middle one of the middle rows and I'm just going to hold my beak folded in half against that row. I'm going to pick up a stitch on the sack with my yarn needle and then I'm going to sew right through the bottom edge. So where those two double crochet fold in half over top of each other, I'm going to sort of sew right through that and then I'm going to pick up the next stitch and sew right through the middle and then I'm going to pick up the next stitch and sew right through the edge so that my little beak sits out <laughs> like he's going to talk. Now I have a lot of yarn so I want to do the same thing working all the way back just to make sure that beak is fixed on there nice and snug. Once you've sewn it on and it's nice and snug, it's not going to come off, then you can make a little knot underneath the beak. And then you can weave your little tail in back and forth underneath some of those stitches. Once you've gone back and forth a couple times, you can trim any excess. There's your little beak on. Now we're going to put on his eyes on either side of his beak. I've got his eyes on either side of his beak. So you can thread up the long tail left on one of his eyes. And you can pin it or hold it in place like I do. I like that right about there. And then just pick up a piece of a stitch on the bag and sew through the corresponding edge stitch of the eye. Pick up a piece of the bag, sew through the corresponding edge stitch. You can do this all the way around and it will keep all the stitches off from the inside of your bag. But because it's a little bag, if you find it easier just to work back and forth through it, don't worry so much because most people don't look at the insides of little sacks. Once you're finished sewing all the way around, you can make a little tiny knot at the side of your eye just like we did with the nose or bring your yarn through to the back and make a knot out here and you can weave your tail in either in through some of those stitches on the inside of your sack or around some of the stitches of the actual eye itself, trim any excess and then do exactly the same thing for number two. Once you've got your little face on, all we have to do now is add his wings. And I like to add my wings to the same row that his beak is attached to. So you want to follow that row all the way out to the edge. Flatten your, your little <laughs> sack so that you know where the two sides are. And then you want to attach your wings 
You can flatten them in half so that the tail is out to one side. Thread it up in your yarn needle. And then because it's the same color as your bag, you can sew back and forth through the bag. It doesn't matter. But you want to follow that line out. So that's how you know they'll be roughly in the middle. And I'm just going to work my hook or my needle here right around that row. And then I'm going to sew through both edges of this, this little pinched together wing all the way across along that line so that his wing sticks out the side. And if you feel like it needs to be moved a little bit forward, you can take it out and move it forward. Or if you want to move it back, you can do the same thing. And once you've sort of sewn back and forth through both sides of the fabric and then into the actual sack itself, do the same thing that we did over here, make a little knot at the edge, and then you can weave your tail back and forth in through some of those stitches. And once you've got one wing on, you want to go ahead and add the second one. While you're sewing on the wing, I just wanted to mention that if you feel that this is going to be going to the home of somebody who's a little rough with their toys or their little sacks, then if you have enough yarn left over once you get to the end of the wing, you might want to double back and sew that whole row a second time just to make sure that that wing is on there nice and tight, just like we did with the beak section. Once you've got your wings on, all that's left is to thread our ribbon through our little eyelet spaces and our little drawstring sack is all done. So you want to grab a length of ribbon. I've got a little over 60 centimeters or 24 inches here. And you can start at either the very back or the front, depending on where you want your bow to sit. So if you want to start threading through the front, your bow will be out the front. If you want to start threading out the back, like from the back and all the way around, then your bow will sit at the back. It doesn't really matter. You just want to push it through from the front and then back out, in and out throughout all of those little eyelet spaces. Once you've woven it in and out through all those spaces all the way around, you can take both your ends, hold them together and then just sort of tug on them so that they're even out the front. And that's it. Now you can cinch up your little drawstring sack. Tie a little bow. And the little guy's all done. <laughs> cheep, cheep, cheep. <laughs> And there you go, a cute little chick sack to add to our little critter drawstring bag collection. I hope you enjoyed making this little guy along with us today, and we will see you here soon on the Jaden Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have a wonderful week, everyone. Bye! <laughs>